The Senate has revealed that the new head of the Interim Management Committee, IMC, of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, Professor Kemebra Dikumo Bonde and other members of the committee now collect 20% to 30% of the contract sums before contractors are paid. This is contained in the report of the uh, Senator Olubimi Adetumbi, APC Ekiti North led Adult Committee on Investigation of the alleged financial recklessness to the tune of 40 billion naira in the Niger Delta Development Commission by the IMC. The committee report also indicated that a claim by the IMC and the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator to Godswill Akpabiu that the headquarters of the commission had been completed to 95% is false. The Senate committee in the report said that these were revealed by the Chairman, Contractors Association of Niger Delta Development Commission, Joe Adia, in a written submission to it. And we still have in studio a legal practitioner, Debras Oshoma, to help us make sense of all of this matter. What's your reaction to this new side of the matter? Yeah, um, it's um, unfortunate, um, like I said, um, because of the week, that um, if you want to um, be a rich man in Nigeria, even if you want to be a rich man you know, in other climbs, you mm. go into entrepreneurship or you do business. But here, yeah, for you to be rich, just join business or do join government or do business with government. Mm. And, and because you find Join that the government or you do, do business, business with, with the government. government. Interesting. And so because there are no, our laws are observed more in breach. And so you find out that, you know, some cases, some of these, you know, procurement processes are bypassed. Mm -hmm. Bidding processes are skewed to favor a particular candidate. That's where they are complied with. Even certificate of no objection from the Bureau of Public Procurement can be procured mm -hmm. in some cases and company substituted and all it just needs to do is give one excuse or the other. And, and so you find out that agencies that are put in place to ensure that um, you know, there's accountability in the process, these are the agencies that will skew, skew the process you know, against you know, transparency. And so that's why you find out that you put an interim management committee in place to clean the urgent table. But the interim management committee is now enmeshed in modeling the table. Wow. So now there are, there are two issues here. The corruption that took place before the emergence or the inauguration of the interim management committee yeah. and the corruption that is taking place in the interim management committee. Why the interim management committee and the minister are hell-bent on exposing the corruption that took place before. They don't want people or the House of Assembly or House of Rep to look into the activities of the interim management committee. Why the House of Rep is busy with the activities of the interim management committee, not wanting to look into the activities of what transpired before the interim management committee because they are also culpable. So what you have is um, a, a cash 22 situation. Head or tail, hmm. you have the accuser accusing the accuser. And it's very unfortunate. And then we are just there, our hands are folded, we are looking at the drama, the fainting drama. It's overwhelming. Because. Yes, yes, it is. It is overwhelming. But if only, I'm not telling anybody, I'm not saying people should, you know, take up arms. But if only the way we troop out to churches. Look at America recently. One, just one person was killed and, you know, there was a wide fire of protest. If only the way we troop to churches and troop to mosques. We just, you know, say today we will not go to Canaan land. Today we will not go to kilometer 15. Today, we will not go to Catholics, Anglican, or Methodist. Today, we will not go to Nasfat. We won't go to mosque. We'll just gather at the express and say, enough is enough. Government must do something. We must call these people to order. The fuel subsidy remover, Jonathan's hands was forced by the people. Mm -hmm. But today, these same people they accommodate anything and everything government. They will create excuses for government. Even as we speak now, a lot of people are divided. Oh, look at the uh, 
the uh, revelation Akpabi is making. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Akpabi is making a lot of revolution. How about the revelations against Akpabi and his men? Where do we turn to? When do we turn? So you see another group who say, ah, look at... Uh, so the situation here is that I like it when they fight because they both expose, Themselves. you know, the innate corruption within the system. Mm -hmm. And But the question is, it is not, like I always say, our problem is not lack of laws, but lack of the willpower to implement the existing one. Even if we implement 80% of the existing laws that we have, all of this... We'll have our house cleaned up. Yes. As I speak to you also, by virtue of Section 88 and 89 of the 1999 Constitution, the House has inherent powers to investigate, audit, and stop corruption. But the question is, it's only in Nigeria that you hear, you know, the executive tell members of the parliament that your resolutions are mere advisory. Even if the resolutions are mere advisory, the fact that they expose corruption, the government that is ready to fight corruption should act on them. Mm -hmm. But at the end, we end up looking at the body language of Mr. President, we we'll beg him, we we'll plead with him to act on such recommendation. That is why some people would tell you that all of the investigation will amount to nothing or that it is mere witch hunt. Mm. It is better let them be witch hunting each other. <laughs> Akbabu has said, some of you collected contract. And they are also saying, look, some, you also, you collected money, you collected percentage from some of this contract. So that means they are all copied. Essentially, everybody is corrupt. Everybody, that's matter. why I told you that if you want to be rich, just go into government or do business with government. That's why Sorry. when you talk about you know, societies, people will pray for you to be in government. Not because they believe that you will do, do it differently, it. but that once you get there, you know, it will be your turn to chop. That's why, Maka, the day you are appointed special advisor, just special advisor to a governor, I can tell you your primary one classmate that you have never heard of. Will call me. Will call you that day <laughs> and congratulate you. Your family members will tell you, now is our turn, oh, you need to shine your eyes. Nobody is seeing the, the way we see Nigeria now is like a building that is about to collapse. Grab what you can grab before something. it collapses. But we forget that the way we are going, mm -hmm. if care is not taken, we will have nothing left for our generations coming. Anyway, nobody left anything for us before. All right. Okay, so before we round up this session, very quickly, let's talk about nepotism and, you know, giving uh, contracts to foreign, uh, foreigners. It didn't start today. Now, the question is, the probes on this one, have you ever, is there anyone that has ever been successful probing this kind of matters? Have we seen any success? Or are we just going around again, having the same issues, having to discuss about the same issues? It, it, is, the, it is the duty of the National Assembly to probe and submit a report to the executive. Whatever the executive does with it is their business. And whatever we, the people, compel the executive to do with it is what they will do with it. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what makes probe successful. We are not, nobody in his right senses can say that there are not enough revelation on both sides. Right. As we speak now, not just in Nigeria, there is a grand plan by the Chinese to extend you know, their rule, their dominance, you know, everywhere. And Africa is a fertile ground. And apart from the fact that Africa is a fertile ground, we provide opportunity, we give them, you know. And so, because, you know, in Europe, most of the companies that come to do business here, when they get back home, their books are audited, and in some cases, they are prosecuted for infractions committed outside the shores of their country. Right. But for the Chinese, it's a different thing. Infractions committed within, they are punished for it. But infractions committed in Africa, everybody looks the other way. And, and, so, and that's why you find out that even jobs that are, we can do and do very well, it is very easy and convenient for our government officials to give them to the Chinese mm -hmm. company. Not to talk of the ones they say they are financing. In some cases, these are some of the funds that they make from you. They bring it back to finance, and then they dictate to you how it should be spent. As we speak now, there's another one brewing on the railway contract. Right. I felt ashamed that when I listened to a uh, minister for transport, right on Rebo Chibike Amechi's explanation on that clause, that, that obnoxious clause 
ceding our sovereignty True. to the Chinese government in the event that we are not able to pay True. back a trillion naira loan. Are you going to pay from all this uh, 1,000 naira railway ticket? Moribund railway? And, and so, you say that, oh, I, if, if, the, 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 what it means is that if you are not able to go back, they go after the asset. Why don't you now tie the asset mm -hmm. to the repayment? Why cede your sovereignty. your sovereignty? And you give them, it's like giving them a blank check. You say, no, I gave them a blank check, but I know what they will come after. Are you in their mind? It, these are some of, not just the Chinese company. I can tell you, there are companies that were, that were convicted in Switzerland, but are doing jobs Clean in here. MPA here in Nigeria. And then MPA will take time, they will struggle to tell you that this, the people mentioned were not convicted, even though the company were convicted, for offenses committed in MPA in Nigeria. You know, so, and then you, when you hear some of this probe, you now begin to ask yourself, and we the people that are supposed to, you know, be angry about what is happening, we now, you see us, you know, Divided. debate which is right, which is wrong. And that's also one of the major reasons why this thing is fashionable, because now it is very difficult for you to just take out funds from here and go bank it abroad. So what do they do? Because the if, um, investment law allows these companies to take out their profit 100%. And so when you award this contract, mm. what they do is the fact that at some point, they take away this, uh, your, including the ones that they are around tripping or laundry for government officials. And so they put them, they beside them abroad. And these are funds that are meant for development here. I remember also about some, about 10 years back, we took on some of the big uh, telecom companies. We went, the matter went as far as the National Assembly. Understood. But at the end of the day, nothing came out of it because the way they were using the Chinese companies to execute erection of masts. These are projects that Nigerians can do. You award them to Chinese companies and the Chinese will in turn award it to Nigeria and then sit down and take the profit 100%.